instruction with a wise man is better than 10 years merry study of books. With these words, I want to greet all of you, dear friends. Welcome to this scientific webinar organized by Team 2020 Helpers in association with Department of Physics, Government Arts College, Karu. I am Moaz Hussain and pleased to be the moderator of this webinar. First of all, I may briefly introduce you to our honorable convener of this day, Ms. Sivagami Ji, Head of Physics Department, Government Arts College, and the guest speaker of today's session, Dr. Sankari Nadupalli, an independent researcher who has completed her PhD in 2018 from Luxembourg Institute of Technology. Now I may request Ms. G. Sivagami to give a brief introduction and motivation for conducting this webinar. Please, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A warm good morning to one and all. It is my pleasure to welcome you all for this national level webinar in recent trends in material science. Uh, first of all, I thank uh, Teams 2020 for accepting our proposal to conduct this webinar. And also I thank our speaker, Dr. Shankari Ma'am, for accepting the invitation. Let me give a brief introduction about our speaker. Dr. Shankari Nadupalli Madam is a completed PhD in physics, M.Tech in nanotechnology, material science, literature, and uh, she is currently seeking opportunities related to ferroelectrites, ferroelectrics, and ferroscapes in photovoltaics. And then successfully, she completed PhD in physics, exper experienced in taking up new projects and solving problems with meticulous research and analysis. She is skilled in electrical, optical, and mechanical characterization techniques and she worked extens intensively with polar oxides, ceramics for optoelectronic applications and ferroelectrics for photovoltaic applications. She is a quick learner, team worker and kind. Her life goal is to be a good citizen who solves little problems in our world to make it a better place. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, your uh, bio data is very nice. I hope this session would really inspire our students to take higher education in research and also will be a good citizens. Thank you, ma'am. I hand over the sessions to Dr. Shankari, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Shivagami Garu, for introducing me so wonderfully. Uh, I also thank Moaz, my dear friend, for uh, forcing me to come and do this good deed on this nice day. Today is the new year for us. It's Ugadi here in uh, Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. So it's a very nice start uh, for my year. Um, so uh, there, there are a few requests that I'd like to make before I start talking today, um, which you might all know is um, we're going to talk about the purpose of pursuit. Why do we do scientific research and how do we do it and how do we find purpose while pursuing scientific research? Um, so if every one of you, if, if anyone, um, everyone can get a piece of paper and a pen, a writing device, uh, that'll be fantastic because we'll have an interact, interactive session where we could go back and forth uh, with all the attendees of this webinar. Um, and uh, it'll be very nice if, you, if I can also see the people who are speaking. So if you're interacting with me, please turn on your video that said, it wouldn't be like I'm talking to two letters, which is how I can see on the screen usually. Um, so I, I will probably now start sharing my screen and um, it will be very nice if you guys can also start showing your videos. So we'll take about uh, one minute or two minutes by the time I figure out how to share my screen. So, yeah, I'm going to make this. So, you guys can see the full screen of the presentation, is it? Okay. Moaz, let's start. Can you please give me a feedback as to what you're actually seeing? Are you able to see my team's 
screen or are you able to see the presentation slide itself? Yes, exactly, ma'am. We can see the first page of your presentation, Purpose of Perceived Scientific Research. Okay. And okay. Uh, you can start this PPT, ma'am. Okay, yeah. So, if you can all uh, see the comic, um, which is which I put up on the title page of my presentation. Um, it is a comic called Calvin and Hobbes, which I adore a lot. Uh, and here, what Calvin is trying to say is he's wanting to find a grant um, in order to pursue his research, meaning money in order to buy uh, consumables, probably laboratory equipment, books, and mentorship if needed be, um, from the grant money that he'd require. But however, that is the roadblock for a lot of people, especially for people who are not affiliated with an institution and who, are, who want to casually pursue science. So uh, having said that, why do we conduct scientific research in the first place? Uh, we conduct scientific research in order to enhance society, advance the knowledge that we already have, and all, also a bit, a part of it, also to defend ourselves in the world as a country. So usually, um, when people pursue, what is scientific research? How does scientific research actually start? So scientific research, um, any, I, if once you get an idea, um, from somewhere, you get an idea, and then you work on it. You make several, you, you assess the pros and cons of it, you make a hypothesis around the idea, and that is when uh, you would be, it would be clear in your mind as to what to acquire, what kind of data to acquire, what kind of experiments to do, uh, what kind of activity should be performed in order to get the information, in order to make an informed decision. So that, that is the experimental part of it. So once you get an idea, you do the hypothesis. And that is when we come to the analysis part, the data collecting part. Once you collect the data, you analyze it, you see it, um, and then you form informed conclusions. Once you form informed conclusions, we implement the conclusions and the findings we got from the data and analysis to real life applicative devices Right? And that is when, once it is done, it is not the end of research. It's a cyclical phenomena where you would view it again in a new perspective. Probably you would get your peers over. You'd publish your research. You will make a patent of it. And then you will make sure to um, sell the patent or sell an idea, sell your product. That way, you'll get a lot of feedback from the community and the society and your peers. And you would look at the problem in a different way and analyze that other idea might merge from it or an advancement might merge from it. So this is the ideal um, phenomena that you see usually in scientific research. So, so simply research is what? Is a process of discovering new knowledge, either by developing new concepts or we advance the known phenomena, which most of the basic research is about. So we advance the known, uh, uh, known theories and then we form new understandings of the concepts. Scientific research uh, fundamentally is of three types, which is uh, exploratory, descriptive and explanatory. Now explore, exploratory research is where you are unsure as to what the problem is. You, you go ahead, you do several experiments, um, and uh, you are not really sure as to what the scope of your research is or what the entirety of the problem is. So you investigate uh, the problem itself, and you try to establish the problem in a way which would aid descriptive and exploratory research. So, um, so exploratory research is important to understand the scale of the problem. And it doesn't have to be conclusive. It can be 
very little. It can be just a beginning of a problem, just a small part of the problem that you might discover later. So de descriptive research, for example, as it goes by its name, um, uh, it extends an answer to answer uh, how and what are we looking at. So once you explore the problem, you look at the problem, and in descriptive research, you will see what exactly is it, what are we really looking at, and how do we go ahead by looking at this problem, and what are the ways we could solve this problem. And finally, exploratory, ex, ex, explanatory research is conducted to determine interactions. What is the causative factor? What is the effect? So this explanatory research is the main part of basic research science, sciences. It's not applied research, but basic research, wherein you, you, you find a cause and an effect, and you relate those variables. You determine the why of it. You kind of look into why is it happening. It's not how, but why exactly um, is the phenomena that you're looking at is occurring in nature. And it is very important, explanatory research is very important in order to form new materials. For example, man-made devices, which, which are not existing in the nature, but you, you make it. an inventive step comes out of an explanatory research, which is essential in the current generation. So now we've talked about um, what scientific research is in a very vague and a very wide way. So let's look at what's the purpose in conducting research, because a lot of us take up this profession. So when we look at it, so in an ideal case, science, what the science we do affects us, affects the entire world. And the entire world and what happens in the world and in the society affects science. So this is not direct. So how does it actually happen? So when researchers pursue science, after our analysis and data mining, we publish our research. Where do we publish our research? We publish in scientific journals. Uh, we write patents. We uh, teach science, we communicate science using several media, uh, like news articles, um, and now the internet. Also, you can write blog posts probably and shoot your experiment and disseminate your results. And these communications, especially journal articles and patents, these reach the policymakers. So the policymakers in each country, they're always chasing technology. So that seeing what is happening in your lab, seeing what is coming out of your lab, and then decide as to how we should go forward, what to do and what not to do. And then that is how the policies, the, the grant policies affect the world in large. So uh, what you buy, what you do, what you study, what the textbooks are made, made of, science textbooks, they're all science policies is what it determines, what research you pursue, for example, in a research institute and how you're funded is determined by science research policy. So this is the ideal way in which uh, science should work. But it is not all like that. It's, it's not so cyclical, let's say. It's quite skewed. It's skewed in a manner where um, what you do doesn't directly affect the world. But the society's social, economic, and political matters affect the policy directly, affect what you publish directly, and affect the science directly. Now, one of the examples, the most easiest example that we can put forth is the COVID situation that we are having currently. Due to the pandemic, the number of papers being published on COVID, on SARS, has has exponentially increased. Everyone is talking about it. The major platforms of science communication are covering COVID extensively. Now, this doesn't mean that the other research is not happening, but it does determine. So the next, the impact of COVID on science policy and publication and science research, basic fundamental research is going to be definitely affected. Apart from that, also the social and the political uh, factors also determine uh, the policies, especially uh, when uh, 
countries are promoting different space research, for example, or space resource research, where there's a race to space now currently. Um, and several countries want to reach space, mine the space, and hence such kind of social and political and economical factors influence policy and hence would influence uh, science as a whole. So this is very important to understand because this kind of skewed way where if you think that one subject or one topic would benefit the world extensively, you might kind of lose motivation in between because of these factors. So it's important to keep in mind and not lose motivation when you are in science research. So now let's talk about uh, finding purpose in our work. So a lot of researchers, we are, uh, we continuously uh, learn. We are continuous learners. Now, when I talk about researchers, I am not talking about just um, doctoral, doctor, doctoral students. I'm not talking about people who are only doing uh, who are scientists. I'm also talking about undergraduates and school students. Everyone was getting into the lab, uh, fiddling their hands on electrical or any kind of equipment, materials. If you're even looking at a small glass in your house, it is essential to nowadays think and talk about what it is, what is it made of? How, do, how else do we use it? How do we recycle it? Where does it come from? So these kind of uh, pursuits, since we have that in our daily life, when I'm talking about uh, researchers, it is all of them. So how do we find purpose in our work or how do we find purpose in our study to not lose motivation? So see, all of these uh, factors here are uh, not necessarily uh, there for everyone. For example, some don't even exist for me. So um, the most important thing we have to look at is, is if you love it or not, are you loving the pursuit that you are practicing? Does the world need it? So you have to really assess as to, is your problem or the, the problem that you're going, going to solve, is it necessary to enhance the world? How does it affect the world? Uh, does the world need it? Is the kind of thing that you have to keep in mind. And of course, you being great at it comes with a lot of practice, with a lot of learning. I am not great at my field of science because I am still learning. The more you learn, you'll realize how vast the knowledge knowledge is. And last but not the least, and the most important, you have to be paid for it. Unless and until you're not paid for it, you wouldn't be able to spend sufficient time on the passion, on your mission, and on your pro profession for it. So it's in, uh, there are two factors which are obviously very important. But the two factors which I feel personally are important is if you love it or if the world is. That's very personal. Now, what factors that come from the outside is if you're great at it or if you are paid for it. Those are the factors that we have to hunt. Now, we will talk about it too. Um, so how do we go about it? So how do we solve um, is a question that you have to ask when you're finding purpose in your research work or in a pursuit. So what are you going to solve? What are you improving? And or what are you simplifying? Uh, what do you intend to develop? Or what do you want to understand? Are there things that you really need to know in order to understand the direction of your uh, mission? Once you know the what's of your uh, pursuit, then it is very important for us to assess. So what is our expectation from the pursuit that you're making? Uh, how do you expect it to impact society? Uh, are you satisfied by pursuing this route? Uh, are you learning from this pursuit? And are you interacting? It is the most important thing um, is learning and in interaction is the most important. By interacting with people, by putting into words what is in your mind and to actually uh, get another perspective is an essential factor when it comes to working for the world, working in science. That is the reason 
we, we, we are a society, the community, we, we work in a community, we go to research laboratories, you have a mentor, you have a committee, you have colleagues and peers, and you go to conferences, because that kind of interaction is essential to know if you're going in the right direction or if you're completely out of the box. Um, while that is it, I, I would also talk about um, uh, the personal motivation that we have uh, while pursuing research. Uh, the, you know what you're working on. Um, and, you know, and it is essential to know, once you know what you're working on, it is essential to know how are you going to go about it. But it is also important to know why exactly are you doing it. So let's do a small um, uh, exercise um, uh, now, uh, since I asked you all to find a pen and a, a, a paper and a writing device, a pen or a pencil, and let's go ahead by doing a small exercise where we will talk about um, the scope of study and aims and objectives of your pursuit, for example, even undergraduates um, who are now learning or who has a favorite subject can go about it. Um, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've checked Government uh, Arts College Karun's website and I realized that you all have examinations coming up uh, in the next two weeks. Um, so it'd be very nice to do this mental exercise. And for the same reason, um, uh, Moaz and I have decided to go with a lighter topic now, um, such that it, we, we, our intention is to motivate everyone to pursue and do good in the recent days. So let's do a little exercise. So um, the first thing I want you to write is what problem interests you. And once you write, I will give you five minutes and we can talk about it. Everyone, everyone can, each one of you can slowly come up and read what they wrote down. The problems that I feel that most people are interested currently are as a whole. Yeah, please, please. Ma'am, water and the waste management, ma'am. Two of the most pressing matters have already been addressed, which is energy in all forms and water and waste management, which comes to recycling, water purification, Extracting rare earths from already polluted waters, for example. Purification and um, energy uh, from water, which is water splitting. Hydrogen is a hydrogen production, hydrogen storage. Uh, hydrogen based um, energy production is now a hot topic in most research institutes. So exactly, that is also one of the problems. And energy is one of the biggest factors to consider, especially in a country like India. Uh, travel, climate, space, defense. Um, these are wide topics, but then, then there are problems which are very tiny. Um, for example, I live in, live in a city, which is, um, I live in Hyderabad, and we have a river which is almost dead, which is Musi. And uh, there are research institutes and groups here which work on um, understanding the pollution 
um, and, and the spread of pollution that happens within the Musi River. But it's also essential to come up. Um, I do not see these um, uh, the, the, the scope or the impact of research in that line in major research journals or articles or in the news. So that is something that I'm looking forward to. Reviving the rivers, for example, is a very important factor for climate in India as such, because we are very um, an agricultural-based country, and we all require fresh water for a long time. So that is also very important, and it has to be scientifically pursued in order to exactly know the implications of pollutions and what, where is it seeping uh, in our country. Um, what is also important is food, food packaging, adulteration, additives. These are all problems which uh, should interest us as a community in order to make, enhance our living better, both for us in the current generation and also for the future generations. So once you know your research interest or the problem that interests you, it is, uh, it is nice to discuss in such platforms as to how you would go about to solve it. Because if you start a conversation both uh, within yourself and within your peers, and you will have a research group, uh, so to say, to work um, on it and to talk about it. Um, so anyone who is interested in such social <laughs> problems can come, come to me and I'm open to discuss about them. So uh, while that being it, um, what's very important also uh, to understand is our focus areas. So it's, it, it's always uh, easy to have grand um, ideas to clean the Musi and to revive the river. That's the kind of statement is very grand and it can't happen um, in a day or a two or in a year. It's, it takes a lot of time. So it's important to know what exactly is your focus area. How or what exactly, what tiny little problem are you going to focus on and how are you going to go about it? And one of the most important lessons that I had learned uh, during my doctoral education, and even now, uh, after being independent, is a motivation. And uh, while I put mentorship at the last, it should come before motivation, because I think um, motivation and mentorship go hand in hand. While motivation is personal, it is also important to find a good mentor. And we are very lucky to be born and raised up um, in a tradition um, in India, an Indian tradition or in an Indian culture, wherein uh, like every community in India has the concept of teacher, a guru, a mentor, uh, which is very important uh, for us to understand if you're going in the right direction, to be accountable and also to work with in a friendly way not in a strict manner, but to be able to talk to your teacher freely in order to get motivation and feedback. Only when you get feedback, you would be motivated. So these two factors are essential and important in order to move forward. And of course, I have already pointed out the direction that you're going in is also important. It's often very easy for um, people who are indulged in research on a day-to-day -day basis to divert in another direction instead of going in, uh, in the direction that they were thought that they would. Um, and engagement is also essential. As I've said, that peer-to-peer -peer engagement, publications, for example, when you publish your research, even if you're an undergraduate, for example, I motivate you guys uh, to come up with a small research problem. Let it be uh, finding a new material, looking at how it combusts, for example, looking at the thermodynamics of it, uh, or making a particle or a nanoparticle or a material or a polymer and doing rheological and all kinds of assessment, um, characterization, or let it be atomic force microscopy. If you have a tabletop uh, atomic force microscopy in your institute or in your neighboring institute, you could always engage and uh, do such research and come publish. Um, I encourage all students to publish even if they are doing undergraduate studies.
and communication. So by engagement, you will you will get gain communication. Talk about your research in social media. Talk about it in Instagram. Talk about it tw on Twitter, on Facebook. You can make probably TikTok videos on your science, and uh, that kind of uh, gains momentum. You are doing good to the world, and it will become a trend. Instead of dancing on silly songs, I think this kind of communication is so much more better. So that being said, um, I uh, publish one of the worst things a researcher could do in any stage. Let it be an undergraduate researcher, postgraduate, or a doctor, is to pile up on your work. You do so much work. You have a lot of data, and you sit on it. You think that you don't have a narrative. You don't have a story to back it all up, because it is an it's a it's a question it's an answer which is which doesn't have an end. You're not able to conclude your research, but you have seen something, and probably it has been seen several times. So uh, probably the phenomena that you're seeing in this particular material has been seen in 1984, probably in the 70s, or probably in the 60s. But what you see currently is still something that you see. So this is kind of uh, this is this is an additive research that you're doing, and the more times you do it. The more of a fact it will become than a theory or a hypothesis. So what happens in science is a person, a researcher, comes up with a hypothesis or a theory and says, oh, this phenomena that we see currently here is probably this. Now, if more people look at it and then get the same result, then what would it happen? It will become a fact. And then explanatory research occurs. Then we can explain the phenomena. We are sure about what is happening, then we can explain about it. So don't pile up your research, even if you are an undergraduate, if you're doing a little experiment in your lab, there are journals who can definitely publish your research. Um, so find a mentor, communicate your research, try to do some new research, be in, learn about the hot topics in several journals and publish your results, publish your first results and talk about your research, write news articles about it, even in your college, write blog posts, engage in public dissemination, talk in science clubs about it, write, um, talk to your radio station or new local newspaper or magazine about it. And one of the things which is becoming a very hot topic in science pursuit is animation of your science and making science art, uh, which is a very niche topic, which is now emerging. See, life sciences as a subject has this for a long time. Illustrating organs, animals, bacteria, fungi, algae had been there because that is how the taxonomy, the naming of several algae or something occurs by looking at the structure of the algae or the bacteria. So what you should do is, even if you're doing working with physics or fundamental chemistry or material science, Instead of looking at the structure or the phenomena on a 2D, on a paper, instead of drawing it, uh, try to uh, understand how to animate your science. Talk about it, um, uh, make art out of it, use different softwares, and uh, you can also disseminate this research um, on several social media platforms and also in some journals. So um, there, there are several journals who also publish um, your animated abstracts and also science art, which is um, an emerging topic. It is also a field that you can actually pursue in the future. So I will, um, so once I have said what I would today, and I am sad that we didn't have any interactions, but I encourage you guys to publish in um, the Journal of Experimental Results. It's a Cambridge University uh, Press Journal. Um, very open to undergraduates, postgraduates, doctorate students, postdocs, and independent researchers also. So I hope you guys check the page and there's an opportunity for you to promote your research. So thank you so much, Moaz, and thank you so much, Simaga Migaru, for allowing me to talk today for this opportunity. And I hope my next talk 
would uh, definitely uh, have more interaction because I would be talking more science, a matter of science than a matter in general. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sankari. I hope everyone has enjoyed this amazing, amazing and informative session. This was a very unique, unique in the sense scientific research requirements, purpose, and aspects are never explained this beautifully and such a simpler manner. Everyone knows the importance of scientific research, but a very few among them get into it and do some kind of research because they are unaware of what to do, what we want to do, and how should we start? How should we start pursuing the research? So this session was a very good explanation for those who don't understand how to start the session, how to start a research. And uh, I, I thank very and thank you as a speaker, Dr. Sankari. You have uh, elaborated many students in a very good manner. And I, I like if Professor Sivagami also quote a little bit about today's session, please, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. This session was very useful. Uh, ma'am, you gave us, uh, you gave the students the idea how to select the problem, how to proceed with the research ways, how to adapt more ideas or more methods to do a research work. I really hope that this session will be a really useful one for our students and also for our faculty members. And uh, this session will really persuade our students to take higher education in research area. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Uh, with these words, I like uh, to allow our attendees, if they have any doubt, they can clear with our speaker or even me and uh, Professor Sivagami will answer their queries. Please, anybody from this crowd. 